Today we are going to extract data from the city directories so that you can find more ancestors. These are a powerful set of records. And when you combine this with a powerful strategy, boy, you can really find your ancestors quickly. Okay, if this is your first time here, my name is Connie Knox. I am a lifelong genealogist here to help you go further faster and factually with your family history research. Now make sure you subscribe so that you get notified each time I upload a video. And you know what? Genealogy TV has a website, a newsletter, and a Facebook page. Links for all of that are in the description box below. Now I'm going to be demonstrating this strategy using Ancestry in Excel, but it also works using Family Search in Excel or Family Search in Google Sheets. Whatever you want to use, uh, it works on both. Okay? So there is a handout for this for the information access level channel members, the Happy Dance level patrons, and you can find them on the website. Details are in the description box below. We'll talk more about that at the end of the show. All right, let's jump over to the computer and learn how to extract these city directories into an Excel spreadsheet. Okay, so here we are over at the computer, and a few weeks back, I had done an episode called uh, Filter Census Records by Surname, and in that episode, I show you how to extract data in an Excel spreadsheet, and then there was also another episode called Number One Way to Break Down Brick Walls. Basically, you want to find all of the ancestors in the community especially with the same surname. Well, in the previous episode, I showed you how to do it with census records. And this is just a screenshot from that episode where you can see that I've got the surname Steed, Lewis, Porter. You can filter these columns, right? So then what happened, I got a comment from filter census records by name from Mary Teresa Schmidt Taylor. And she said, is there a way to do this with city directories? Well, in fact, there is. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump over to my ancestor. This is my great grandfather, Herman Miller Madsen. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see this a little bit better. If we scroll down, we scroll down we see that there are several city directories here. So what I've done is I have opened those up. So here's one from 1955. And if we scroll in, this is Herman Madsen and his wife, Francis. All right, so there's Herman and Francis. They're living in a house at 367 Loma Avenue in Long Beach in 1955. Okay, hold that thought for a moment. So then I opened up another one and I found, I'm looking for him, Herman and Miller, Herman and Francis. Now remember when you're looking at city directories, you kind of have to look for the first name, the last name first, right? Because they're going to go in alphabetical order. So we have Madrid Alice and everybody with that last name Madrid. Then we have Madsen, starts with A, Alf and Alvin, and so on. And we come down here to Herman. And Francis is in parentheses, which means his wife. They're living in a house at 367 Loma Avenue. And this was in 1961 in Long Beach. All right. Now let's go look at another one. All right, so looking at this one, this is 1963. And we scroll down looking for Madsen. Here's Madison. Interesting, right? Because we want to be paying attention to various spellings. All right, so Madison, where's Madison? Her, here it is. Herman and Francis at 367 Loma Avenue. All right, let's go see. Do we have another one? Oh, I do. All right, here's another one. So it's trying to find Madison again. Ignore the highlights for some reason. It's highlighting. There's Madison, Madsen. So that they were at the bottom of this list. Madsen, Alf. All right, Madsen, Herman and Francis. Here they are. Here's Herman and Francis at 367 Loma Avenue. All right, so what's the goal here? Why would we want to do this on city directories when everything's already alphabetized? Well, we could find variations in the same spelling 
as we saw at Madison a moment ago. So what we can do is we can extract that data and we can quite quickly extract everybody on this page. And if we wanted to extract several pages, we could. But because in a city directory, everything's alphabetized anyway, you could probably just skip to the names, the surnames that you want and extract only those. So let's jump over to an Excel spreadsheet. So here's a blank Excel spreadsheet. And first thing you want to do is go up and hit, you know, save as and give it a name. So the first thing you want to do is save it before you even start. Okay. So I'm going to minimize that for a moment. I'm going to come back to our first city directory. This is 1955. So what we want to do is we want to come down here to this little people icon and pop that open. This is where all of the transcription has been done by somebody. So we going to grab this little handle here and scroll all the way to the top. And in the first extraction, I'm going to grab the header information up here too. So where it says name, gender. Now the difference between doing this with the census records and doing this with the city directories is in the city directories, the last name and first name are in the same field. See where it says name. Whereas in the census records, the last name and first name or surname and last name are separated. So it's a little easier to uh, filter them later, but that's okay. I'll show you how that works. All right. So we're going to grab all this. We're just going to click. Let me show you what I did there. I start to the left of the name and click and drag. And I'm just going to scroll all the way to the bottom. I know there's probably easier ways to do this, but this is the way I like to do it. All right. So I'm going to control C to copy, and then I'm going to come over to my Excel spreadsheet. Now I don't want to put it in this very first A1 cell because I want to put the year there. I don't actually have to do that with city directories, but I, I want to. So what I'm going to do, because this first year is 1955, I'm going to put 1955 in this first column. Now I have already copied all this information that's highlighted. Remember, I want control C. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to paste it, but I can't just do the normal shortcut code of control V or just paste because it, it'll put everything in one column. See, if I just control V, it looks awful, right? So I'm going to control Z to undo that. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and I'm going to paste as special and I'm going to paste text. That's the little trick that one of the viewers taught me a while back and it pasted all the information from the 1955 census. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to drag this down and I'm going to put the word year here. And now I'm going to grab this little handle and drag it all the way down. And I know somebody showed me the, uh, there's a faster way to do that and I forget what it is. All right. So now we got 1955 and we've got that in there. All right. So now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to click away. I'm going to go back to my data. This was the 1955 one. I don't need that one anymore. So I'm going to go over the next one is 1961. Now, one of the things you need to remember about city directories, these are awesome, by the way, city directories usually happen about every two years, sometimes every four years. It just kind of depended on the area in which uh, the city directories were uh, created, but a lot of times they were every other year. And a lot of times what they did was copy and paste the information from the previous city directory unless there was a change, okay? So <clears throat> the cool part about city directories is it gives you a timeline in your genealogy, a lot of times filling in the gaps when other records don't help you out. So at least you can pinpoint a person in a specific place and time in the ancestor's timeline. So here we have in 1961, still Long Beach, California, we have Herman and Francis again in a home, the H means home, uh, 367 Loma Avenue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the people icon again. I'm going to pop this open. I'm going to get rid of this side panel again. And this time I'm not going to bring in the header information because I brought it in on the first one. So I don't need it again. But I do need to go all the way to the top of this list. Now, here's the other thing. You don't have to 
pull everybody from the page. You could pull just the Madsons, right? I could scroll down and just copy wherever Madsen starts. But there's a reason why I don't want to do that. In my case, you do you, whatever works for you. In my case, I see there's some Madisons over here, a variation of the name. So it might be that they're related. Now, I don't know that at this point. So all I'm going to do is pull that information. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and I'm going to hover to the left of the first name. See, I'm at the very top of the, of the scroll bar, if you can see that. I'm going to click and I'm going to drag all the way to the bottom. I just find it easier just to go ahead and copy all the information. And then I'm going to control C to copy. And then I'm going to go back to my Excel spreadsheet. I'm going to go into the second column and I'm going to right click. I'm going to paste special. I'm going to pick text and I'm going to say go. And it's lined everything up the way uh, the previous one was. Now it could be that if you have city directories from different publishers, the columns might be different. So be mindful of that if you're, if you're adding multiple years to the same Excel spreadsheet. You don't have to add multiple years. In this case, I am. And so let me uh, go back to this was 1961, so I want to put a 1961 here, 1961. I'm going to grab the little corner handle right on the corner so I can drag it down and it will copy that 1961 all the way to the bottom. I'm going to get rid of the word close by hitting the delete button. And now I've got all of this data. Let me scroll all the way back to the top. Two years worth of data in here. And so what I can do now, if I just want to resize the columns, is I can hover over A and drag all the way to the end and let go. So now all the column headers, not the cells, but the column headers are highlighted. If I hover over the right hand side of this column where I get the double headed arrow and double click, it will resize all of these columns to be the maximum width needed so that all the data shows. So I'm going to do this, double click, double click. There we go. So somewhere in this, this column E, there's something really wide in there that's causing it to go, there it is right there. It's causing it to um, go really wide. So you don't have to do that. So what we can do is we can hover over the right hand side of E between E and F here to get the double headed arrows and push it back. Uh, and then if we really want to see what's in that one very wide cell, let me see if I can find it again. We can just click on it and read it up here in the formula bar. Okay. So now we've got this at least two years worth of data. Okay. And what we can do now is we can roll across the top up here and we can hit the filter bar. And what that did was it put a little drop down arrow in the, the very first field of every one of these headers. And if we wanted to bold them to make them pretty, we can do that. So if we wanted to sort by name now to try and find our ancestors, we click the down arrow. And in this case, because, because the name, the, the first name and the surnames are not separated in different columns as they were in the census record video, we can actually search for Madsen or variations of it in this search box. So if I type Madsen, it's automatically checking, look, select all search results for those who have Madsen, right? So it's showing all of the ancestors with the Madsen name, regardless of whether they have a middle initial or not. And we can click OK, and it gives us just all of the ancestors that are in the Madsons. Now I had gone ahead and extracted four years worth of data over here. So if we wanted to search again by Madsen, but maybe we want to look for a variation, maybe we only type mad. And now we're going to get, look, Madden, 
Madsen, Matter, Madison. We're getting a variety of spellings. So we could also type something like, let's say we know that his father's name was Christopher. So if we wanted to type Christopher, I don't see a Christopher Madsen. I see Christine. And actually, that was kind of stupid of me because he had passed away by then. So let's go back to Herman. And there's Herman Madsen popping up. And so if I just click Herman, watch what happens. Now it gives us Herman Madsen for 1955, 61, 63, and 64. He's living at the same location in all four years in Long Beach, California, and his wife is listed with him. And it does give us, in this case, which city directories they were for the year. So while we didn't have to put a, a year over here, I did. And so um, I think that was... I like to have my year on the left-hand side. So that is a quick way to do it. Now, what we could also do is if we wanted to do some variations, like let's pretend for a moment that we weren't sure. Can we do like H Madsen? Okay, so that's going to give us anybody with the initial H. So it doesn't find Herman. So just be aware of the limitations there. Let's pretend for a moment that we didn't know Herman's name, but we knew her name. So we could go Francis. And it's going to show all the different Francis's in here, right? So we could actually search by surname by using this text box search here. And we could see that, oh, maybe it was Mad Madden or, you know, here's Francis. This is the one that, that you see up here. But we could come up with all kinds. Of, so it, this might be an interesting exercise. If you're trying to figure out a woman who you don't know her maiden name, you could f maybe find her this way. I mean, there's just a lot of things to play with. Now, what you could also do is let's, let's just go Madsen. Let's see what we come up with here. Let's just play. All right, so we're going to click all the Madsons, and there's a lot of them. Now let's see if we can search anyone living on Loma Avenue. And it's going to be the same. Oh, look. Okay, so now what this is doing now, in my case, I'm not finding anything new. But, you know, you want to play with these filters because it could be that Francis is a brother. <laughs> in this case, it happens to be his wife. But... You know, it could be that there's another person living nearby on Loma Avenue. You could also look at maps for neighboring streets and search by the streets. So there's a lot of things you could do just by playing with this. Now you can also clear the clear all the filters out of there. And this one, see how that's got a little down arrow next to it, next to the filter, and this one doesn't? So that shows you that um, that one has some filters set. And by the way, you could also, in this case, you could search by gender. Look, what if you were looking for a guy? So you could turn off women and turn on men. And now you've got just uh, the Madsen men living in the area. Pretty cool, eh? So, yes, you can do it with city directories just like you can census records. So uh, have fun with that. You can do this with uh, the same thing using family search. So you don't have to use Ancestry. I'm just happen to be demonstrating it on Ancestry. Okay. There are three ways you can get the handouts. Now, the first way is to join the channel membership here at the information access level channel membership on the YouTube channel, and then go to the community tab and you'll find the posts that have the handout links in there. All you have to do is follow the link and download the handouts. Okay, now the second way is over at Patreon. Now at Patreon, if you're at the happy dance level or higher, uh, you can get the handouts. Those come directly to you in an email every time we announce the new video that has a handout with it. You'll also get early release with that membership. All right, and then the third way is just to go over to genealogytv.org and click on the handouts tab and you can find all the handouts there for individual purchase. 
So uh, I hope that was helpful. The handouts really do support the channel and for that, I thank you. I hope that was helpful. City directories really are powerful because they give you all that information every couple of years. And if you can find them in city directories, then you can create that timeline to show where your ancestors were exactly, right? Every couple of years. So there are more videos on the screen. I think they're over there for your binge watching pleasure. So we'll catch you in the next video.